we stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone to the annual school district meeting in anticipation of our budget for the 96-97 year. As you see by your agendas, we're going to review the budget with some overheads. We have some short overheads. If you have any questions at any time, you know, just feel free to ask and interrupt us. It's going to be very informal. And with that, I'd like to ask Mr. DeGram for you to go over the overheads and start. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kowiak. I'd like to welcome everybody here this evening. Uh, my first duty this evening would be to read to you uh, a letter from the Commissioner of Education, Richard P. Mills. As you conclude your deliberations for the 1996-97 academic year, you have faced challenges of enormous proportion. The delays in the adoptions of the federal budget and the state budget have caused school districts across our state to adopt spending plans based on many assumptions rather than the most accurate estimates of fiscal support. At the same time, the Board of Regents has continued to act upon my recommendations based upon the work of the State Education Department, educators, and citizens to raise standards and to encourage schools and students to meet these increased levels of achievement. Your districts are being challenged to increase your local capacity to improve pupil performance and to present to your residents more information about district schools and pupil achievement. You have heard about frameworks and assessment issues, and more recently about our specific proposals to challenge the vast majority of students to pursue a Regents level program of study. The response to higher standards across New York has been very positive and gratifying to all of us in the public education system. The apprehension as to how to afford and pay for these improvements, however, causes concern for board members and residents. We will continue to advocate for more financial support for local education this year and into the future. We will at the same time ask you to use your wisdom and foresight as well as the creativity of your communities, your districts, and schools, and your staff to discover ways to help pupils prepare for the challenges of the new millennium. Although I am new to New York State, my travels since coming to Albany have convinced me that our public school system has much strength and even more promise. I look forward to working with you to increase opportunities and raise expectations for all of our students. I extend my best wishes to you at your annual meeting and budget referendum, and that is signed Richard P. Mills, Commissioner of Education of the State of New York. Well, uh, we will uh, begin our presentation this evening uh, by talking a little bit about growth in the district. Uh, we are anticipating about the largest elementary kindergarten class we have uh, had in a number of years. We're expecting 135 students uh, to begin school here in September. And uh, uh, this has necessitated uh, some increase in staffing for next year, and I'll talk about that in a little while. First, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the expenditure side of the budget, and each of you has a, a, a popular budget, and we will uh, be working with that document some this evening. Our enrollment, as we go into 1996-7, uh, uh, is expected to be approximately 1,631 students. That's uh, overall about 13 students larger than the current year, but it, at certain grade levels, it's uh, a, a larger growth than uh, it might appear. On the uh, appropriation or expenditure side, uh, I think the important thing that uh, I'd like to emphasize would be the areas where we do have increases in expenditures. I think that's the area of problem comes to you. Under Central Administration and Business Administration, uh, we have an increase for salary adjustments. Also, there's a medical leave that will be taken uh, next year, and so a substitute has to be employed to fulfill responsibilities in that area. That area uh, increases under central administration 
from $143,900 to $151,366. And under business administration, the two are closely linked together uh, from $125,447 to $137,152. The next area of increase, uh, what I would call significant increase, would be in the area of operation and maintenance. This uh, is attributable to uh, an increase uh, of salary for the various employees in, in, uh, work, that work in that area during the last year of their agreement and uh, uh, are expected to get about a 4.8% increase. Under special items, this is an area that uh, has uh, several categories, but one of the areas that uh, has gone up uh, considerably this year is our insurance. It's expected to go up about $7,000 for the coming year. Under the area, under instruction, uh, I mentioned earlier that because of growth in elementary enrollment, we're planning to add one elementary position in September. We are also uh, investing 20,000 uh, additional dollars for textbooks. I might just comment to you that a textbook can cost somewhere between $25 and $40 today, and uh, our allocation uh, in the budget total would be uh, about $120,000 for the coming year. And it uh, uh, sounds like a lot of money, but uh, it really doesn't go all that far when you, when you uh, distribute it among the 1,600 students that attend our, our school system. The state provides us $35 per pupil for textbook purchases. We've increased uh, materials and supplies um, a modest amount, about $1,500 for next year. And uh, moving down in the area of instruction to school library audiovisual, we've added uh, about $5,000 to provide additional library books and resources uh, for the various the several libraries uh, at the elementary and secondary level. In the area of computers, we uh, have added uh, about $5,000 to uh, the hardware budget to buy computers. And we are investing uh, one period a day of teacher time to help with the uh, instruction on the computer and also to do some troubleshooting. We had an incident uh, in the, the uh, library recently where uh, one of the keys on the computer was touched and everything kind of uh, shut down on that computer. You need to have somebody who's really uh, good at uh, uh, troubleshooting and repairing those computers so that they can be up and online and use instruction regularly. In the guidance area, uh, there are some salary increases uh, planned for the coming year. There's a thousand dollars for equipment. We had very had very little money in the budget for equipment for the guidance area over the last several years. And under health services, the school physicians uh, fee has gone up approximately 5% for the coming year. Under interscholastic athletics, this is our sports program. We have about 22 uh, uh, activities under the interscholastic athletic program. The budget is actually going to go down about $4,000. And uh, you may ask, well, how, how are we able to do that? Well, it has to do with the uh, containment, the limiting of the scrimmages that we will have, some transportation uh, cutbacks. Uh, we may limit the, the number of contests that are held. may limit uh, uh, some of the tournaments that, uh, they are, that the students participate in. And uh, we've changed the way that we're handling the uh, IB basketball program. It's more of an intramural activity now. Regarding transportation, there's an allocation in the budget for uh, to, to purchase two new school buses in the coming year and to pay for third, which uh, uh, has been delivered to the district under a previous authorization. We are, uh, for the first time in the coming year, going to be on a cash basis, if you will, regarding the purchase of school buses. And this will save the district uh, a considerable sum of money over the next several years, not having to finance the buses, but rather including them in the budget and paying for them as we go. Under the uh, undistributed area, 
Uh, this really is the area where we uh, address health insurance, retirement, social security, debt service. There are uh, a few comments I'd like to make. Um, health insurance has been a major issue in the district over the last uh, decade. And uh, I, do you have the, uh, the overhead, to Mrs. Miller? I'd like to show you the progress we've made in this area uh, in containing the cost of health insurance uh, by a number of means. It's the column way over on the, on the right that uh, I'd like to point out. Over the last uh, eight or ten years, uh, you can note that some of the increases were double digits, 16%, 15%, 12%, 22%, 13%. If you'll notice in the last five years, we have really been able to contain uh, uh, the cost of, increasing cost of health insurance. We participate in a consortium, uh, which includes all of the districts in this, uh, in the Club Nessex, Washington, and Warren Bowl season. So a number of uh, steps have been taken. We're making real progress in this area. As far as the uh, debt service on the reconstruction program. The sum of money uh, that will go into principal and interest in the coming year will increase over the current year. Uh, and, and it's expected that uh, as the debt service uh, comes online, that the aid to pay for uh, the reconstruction project, the state aid, uh, will also increase and we are still anticipating a return of about uh, 90 cents on the dollar from 90 percent uh, state aiding and uh, having said that i'd also like to mention and there was an article in the press republican in the last couple of days uh, to the effect that we are pleased with the results of the reconstruction program and the energy savings that uh, have resulted we do uh, uh, realize we are realizing about a hundred thousand dollar savings in uh, fuel with uh, electricity costs as a result of the reconstruction program. Basically what that uh, program was all about was the conversion of the senior high school, the one we're in now, from electricity to fuel oil. And uh, the savings are significant. Now, uh, I would also like to point out that uh, I, I think at this point I'll, I'll move on to the revenues. budget itself is up about 3.1%. Okay. Mrs. Miller, can we take a look at the the chart on revenues if you have it? Yeah, start with that. <coughs> there are really two significant sources of income to the district on an annual basis, state aid, and the real property tax. We receive about 58% state aid, and the property tax makes up about 36% of our income. Other revenues amount to about 4.3%, and then there's the elusive fund balance. The fund balance can be 1% at the end of the year, it can be 3%, and uh, we only know that figure once all business for the year is concluded and it can be calculated. Uh, we have shown in the popular budget uh, an estimate of about $579,110 uh, as we end this school year. Regarding other sources of revenue, real property uh, tax items, the major contributor to this area would be the payments and low taxes and interesting penalties on real property. And for 1996-7, we're estimating income of about $197,442. We also receive income for what are called charges for other services. This includes tuition from non-resident students, including our Vermont students, and other uh, small sums of money, uh, student fees and charges, uh, charges for the use of the school pool, uh, student insurance, admissions to uh, school activities like, like a basketball game and, uh, and that sort of thing. Use of money and property. 
Anytime school funds are uh, in, in the uh, district's account, we try to invest those funds to earn some, some uh, needed dollars for the district. And we anticipate in the coming year earning about $19,750 in the course of the year. From time to time, we uh, will have a, a bus that uh, has uh, outlived its usefulness and is no longer uh, able to uh, transport students. That bus might be sold, and the income from that sale would go into an account of the district, uh, again, becoming a source of, of revenue. Then there are miscellaneous uh, areas, including uh, uh, gifts and donations to the district, and uh, refund from, refunds from organizations like the Clinton Essex Washington Moore and Bolsey for services rendered in the previous year. We have, uh, in previous years, received a small sum of money from the federal government for administration of federal programs, but those uh, sources of income that was 3,000 last year, uh, we're not expecting any funds from that source <coughs> this year. Again, back at about 58%, state sources of, uh, of revenue include basic state aid that the district receives, BOCES aid, textbook aid, computer software aid, library aid, uh, computer hardware, aid, building and reconstruction aid, where you receive what's called excess cost aid, and that has to do with serving our special education population. And that's a very large uh, source of income for the district. In the uh, uh, coming year, we're expecting to receive about $8,181,814. Might take just a minute to tell you that the state budget, as Commissioner Mills noted, um, has not been approved as of this uh, date, and uh, uh, we are using a conservative estimate of state aid in, in the development of the proposed budget. We're hoping that we will receive an increase in state aid, and I saw a document today that indicated that it was possible to receive a little over 2 percent increase in aid for the coming year. If that's true, that could help the uh, uh, tax situation a little bit as we prepare a warrant uh, around the end of August. Proceeds of long-term debt. The district has to date uh, borrowed about $10.7 million regarding the reconstruction program. The authorization uh, given by the voters on December 2nd, 1992 was for $11.6 million. So we still have about $700,000 more dollars uh, to borrow as a part of the total financing package for the reconstruction program district wide. Well, while that, those funds are in district accounts, uh, any unused funds are invested. And this year, when I last looked, we had earned about $170,000 in income from, from those funds. Now, the law requires us to return those funds to the taxpayer. We can't increase, for example, your authorization of 11.6, another $100,000. So proceeds of long-term debt, $150,000, have been used to, uh, to reduce any increase in taxes for the coming year. So that's a picture of revenues as we uh, uh, are hopeful that soon we will have an approved state budget that we'll be able to uh, <coughs> confirm our plans as far as uh, financial plans as far as next year goes. Maybe we could talk about uh, taxes for just a uh, moment. And uh, you'll note that we are doing uh, popular budget, the proposed annual school budget, uh, a page that is called calculating your tax. Now, the uh, tax rates are as estimated as follows for the coming year. Uh, in Altona, the current year is $22.27. It's estimated to be $18.16.967. In Champlain, the current year's tax rate is $19.26. It's estimated to be $17.72 for the coming year. In Chasey, the current rate is $18.92. It's estimated to be $19.00 dollars and nine cents in the coming year. Morris, it's currently 1918. 
and it's estimated to be 1803 to 96.7. It's really important that I mention to you that uh, these estimated tax rates are subject to change due to one or more of the following reasons. Modification of the state equalization rates, change in property assessments, projected fund balance available after June 30th, and the amount of state aid actually received by the district during the 96-7 school year. And if you take a look at this chart, you could take your own uh, uh, assessment and, and compute your, your tax rate uh, um, by means of using the chart. I do have a, uh, a little information I'd like to share with you about the impact of the assessments throughout the district. Uh, would you have that uh, form that we, would you have that on the overhead, Mr. Miller? Assessments, equalization rates, full value. If we could move over to the left, you'll note the four towns in the school district, parts of the town, or all the town. Um, and what you, you see two lines for each town. You see the current year's assessment, for example, in Altona at $1,206,878. The uh, estimated assessment for the coming year, $1,569,792. So you see there's an increase in Altona. In Champlain, the increase, uh, and I'll just uh, simplify this by saying, uh, was, went from $178 million to $210 million. In Shazy, uh, quite a substantial increase in assessments from $12,500,000 to $17 million. And Morris from 59 million, 400,000 to 67 million. So substantial increases in assessments as a result of the revaluation. The equalization rates are used, uh, first of all, they're developed by the State Board of Equalization Assessment. And you'll notice uh, for the coming year that they are marked with a T after each of those uh, equalization rates. That's the second column, B. And that means that the rates are tentative subject to change, and they probably will change a little bit, um, and bring tax rates a little bit more, a little closer together uh, by the time we uh, recommend a warrant to the school board at the end of the summer. And then in the next column is the what's called the full value assessment, and that's uh, a series of figures that allow the district to compare itself to neighboring school districts. Um, well, that's one of the reasons. One of the reasons for it. It's used to, to help us compare ourselves to make other districts in, in terms of the assessments. The next column D shows each town's participation in the levy. For example, uh, Moore's <coughs> participates in the levy at uh, 0.228. About 23 percent of the levy is attributed to Moore's. Uh, um, Moore's assessments. Uh, Altona is a very small part of the levy. Champlain, about 70% uh, of the levy. And then in the following column, the next column, it's the dollar amounts uh, that are generated by each town as their contribution to the total levy. And then over to the right, you can see the on column F, you can see the tax rates estimated for the coming year. Is there a another column I can't see there? Yeah. Okay. In Altona, uh, the rate is down just a little bit. And uh, the dollar seventy four for the town of Champlain it's decreased the rate has decreased to dollar seventy four. Jay Z it's gone up a little bit. Of, uh, in Morris, the uh, rate has uh, decreased by $1.14. So, and the full value tax rate has uh, increased 4.7% around the corner. If you look at the bottom of the uh, form, it, this uh, levy, this proposed budget includes $9,000 for each of the $3,000 for each of the three community libraries. And we noted in an earlier meeting that, that uh, the amount stays the same unless the local library trustees request that the uh, authorization be increased and then it would be placed before the voters as a proposition 
for the, for their consideration. If approved, then the, the amount would be increased to the amount requested. Um, once it's approved, then it becomes a part of the budget each year until the request uh, uh, is made to, to change that uh, level of funding. Chris, can I, can I add something there? I guess this year was an extremely difficult year as trying to figure out if your tax rates are going to increase or decrease. Although the tax rate is decreasing because of the, re because of the reassessments, taxes may be going up. So we did, some, did some, we did some calculations on the side, or I did some calculations on the side, and give or take a percent here with these calculations. If you live in the town of Champlain and your assessment increased 10% or less, your taxes should not increase. If your assessment went up 10% or less, your taxes should not increase. If you live in the town of Moores, if your, tax, if your assessment went up 8%, or less, your taxes should not increase. We also got some information from the real property office from Mr. Gagno, and in the town of Champlain, with the numbers he had given us, about 25% of the people will be paying more school tax next year than they did this year. In the town of Moores, it's 21%. That's just based on the calculations okay. that they had, he had given us the information. Okay. I'm not going to uh, read to you out of this uh, document, but uh, I think I touched on several of the improvements for the coming year. We're hoping to uh, increase uh, the purchase of computers. We're adding one elementary staff member. Uh, the ag agricultural education program will have a modest growth from four students to seven for next year. We're very, very excited about that. Increased allocation for textbooks increased funding for library books, additional funding for materials and supplies, purchase of two school buses, and the continued implementation of the reconstruction program. Mm -hmm. We've also, uh, haven't known that, but we, we have made a uh, lot of cuts in preparing the proposed budget. Some of these matters are, are uh, cuts are small, but a number of them are significant and uh, um, we felt we had to make some changes and some cuts in order to uh, propose to the donors um, an appropriate budget for the coming year. Keeping in mind, um, conservative times we're living in um, in the, uh, the capital, state aid, and so on. I'd like to take a moment and, and mention that uh, tomorrow is the vote on the proposed school budget. It's uh, going to be held from 12 noon until 9 p.m. at two locations on the eastern end of the district. The vote will be at the Junior High Cafetorium on the west end of the district, the Moore's Elementary Gymnasium. And we uh, also have individuals who have expressed an interest in running for uh, seats on the Board of Education, member of the Board of Education. Shirley Rabideau uh, is the incumbent uh, for the five-year seat, and Steve Ivace is running on the oath for that position. We have a, an unexpired term of James Castine, who filled the unexpired term of Crystal Edgerton, and there are three individuals who have expressed an interest in that seat. Janice Luternum, Henry Schwartz, and Ann Morehouse the Valley. The qualifications to vote on the school budget and the member of the Board of Education um, require that uh, you be 18 years of age, a citizen of the United States, and a resident of the district for 30 days prior to the vote or election. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that uh, people in the audience have this evening at this time.
recently, reviewing the school budget, um, and then he's here again tonight. So we're most appreciative of the time that he's taken to uh, help us communicate uh, uh, a little better regarding the football school budget to our citizens and district residents. Mr. Kopiak, I'll turn the meeting back over to you, sir. Yeah, I just want to, again, thank everybody for coming, and don't forget to vote tomorrow.